Hello. Yeah, good afternoon. Hi, this is Saurabh Agarwal. And once again, I welcome you to the webinar of TrueChip, the SD Express, the future of SD cards. I thank you all of you for uh, taking your time from your busy schedule for this uh, webinar. And uh, in this webinar today, we will cover the following. So we will start with the introduction of uh, SD Express. Then we will go to the history of UHS 1, 2, and 3, followed by the application. Then we will move to SD Express operation. We will discuss some uh, things about the verification challenges, a bit about the uh, true chip VIP, and the ease of debug debugging with the TrueI, the patented software of TrueChip. So over to my technical team. And uh, you have a Q&A box on your screen. You can just click it and uh, type in your questions. We will try to take up as many questions as possible. We will try to take up as many questions as possible. At the end of the webinar. So uh, moving on to the ne next slide. So we are moving to the next slide and over to my technical team to resume on this webinar. So please type in your questions, ladies and gentlemen, and we will try to answer as many questions as possible. Over to my technical team, enjoy. Good afternoon, everyone. The SD Express card is the latest storage device released by the SD Association in summer of 2018. It incorporates PCI Gen 3 and NVMe interfaces, which are known for their higher bandwidth. To meet the demands of developing configurations like speed, storage, power, etc., SD Express is introduced. The main aim of the SD Express card is to replace the solid state devices with the SD cards. This will provide the ease to the user, that is, it consumes less space and in faster than SSDs. It uses like a full duplex speed of 985 megabytes per second with the help of PCI Gen 3 and NVMe interfaces. To all the existing SD host developers, irrespective of the advancements, there's a good thing that the SD Express maintains interoperability and backward compatibility, which means SD Express is backward compatible with, with both the legacy interface, that is UHS-1 interface, and the SD Express interface. This means a SD Express card has both the PCI or the NVMe and the UHS-1 interfaces. SD Express meets the requirement of higher speeds and storage area with growing demands of user and providing removable features. The increase in higher capacity will also require for the speed to be faster. It will be odd if one have a 128 terabyte of storage and a transfer speed of around 10 megabytes per second. So the user will not be able to get full advantage of that much storage. Due to this, new interfaces of PCI and NVMe came into picture to meet the speed requirements. In the spec version of SD7, SDUC, that is ultra capacity, came into picture which has a storage capacity of around 128 terabyte, and this is true regardless of a form factor. The major operating system now allow application to start up directly from an SD memory card. Here are the major memory cards comparisons. The CFAST, the XQD, and CF Express all are memory cards complying to compact flash association, whereas SD card is a property of SD Express or like SD card association. The compact, uh, like compact flash cards are used in various camera systems. They are, have a major role in imaging industry to do their high write and write read speeds of around 250 megabytes per second, but they cost a fortune. 
that is a typical like disadvantage a 60 gb c fast card will cost around 450 dollars xqd cards are based on pci gen 1 with a speed of around 250 megabytes per second and a storage capacity of around 2 terabytes it basically depends on the market one wants to influence cf express cards are new to the sd uh, like industry which came in 2017 and is emerging like sd express the cfx are introduced with the pci and nvme interfaces and provides a speed of around 2 gigabytes per second but the major disadvantage is that it has a 50 pin connector which requires more space and is not the cost efficient the sd express card and cf express cards are differentiated on the basis of number of pci lanes they are using a cf express card uses two lanes providing two gigabytes per second whereas your sd express card uses pci gen 3 with single lane that is like providing a speed of around one gigabyte per second sd express influences the imaging industry as well as the storage industry plus it's a pocket friendly from the introduction in the year 2000 SD card has come far and is going very strong. The SD card has various capacities starting from SDAC, that is a standard capacity, then the SDHC, that is a high capacity, then comes the extended capacity, and finally in 2018, we come up with the SDUC, that is ultra capacity. As the capacity increases from 2 GB to 128 terabytes, Transfer speed increases from legacy one interface to UHS one, then UHS two, followed by the UHS three, and finally the PCI interface. Many speed class for video and application performance classes were introduced to meet a minimum required requirement for their functions. Files and directories are stored in SD card as per the file system supported by each of the capacity. Basically, the whole SD card will be divided into sectors and clusters to provide better accessing to a particular address. Application performance class will provide faster access and loading of the application on a mobile device. Basically, with the increasing demand of storage in the phones, one can now easily store documents, applications, maps, etc., which will load and run without lagging. Application class will provide a minimum amount of random accessing and sequential accessing. There are two types of application class. That is, you can see A1, that stands for application class 1, and A2, that is application class 2. By using the features like command queuing, efficient flash memory management, and caching the application class, SD card will provide higher performance. Cards also support low voltage that is up to 1.8 volt, uh, so it can be started from the initialization process itself. It shows the comparison between the various speed class, which are speed class, UHS speed class, and video speed class, meeting the emerging demands. Video class is used for writing, that is for recording, or reading, that is for playback, to continuous locations. This is mostly the case with videos. If you talk about standard video, full HD video, 4K video, and finally the 8K video. It results in fast operation by card as data has to be stored or loaded from the continuous location. Command for file system, such as creating directory and update file, uh, like update a file allocation table are also supported by the SD card in the speed class. Here you can see there are multiple characters that is C, U, and V. So C stands for speed class, U stands for UHS speed class, and V stands for video class, which indicates the speed class type, and the number besides speed class type indicates the speed in megabytes per second for speed class and the video class. Whereas for UHS speed class, like it shows three, that is 30 megabytes per second, that is a multiplication factor of 10 megabytes per second. Support for speed class, UHS speed class, and the video speed class are optional. It's up to the user to like enable these features or disable these features. It's optional. User can see the speed class supported by the SD card on the panel. Here is a comparison between the different bus speeds supported within the SD card. Default and high speed 
have a speed of around 12.5 megabytes per second and 25 megabytes per second respectively. UHS-1 card has various speed modes as listed, where the SGR stands for single data rate and DDR stands for double data rate. The number succeeded by them indicates a bus speed in megabytes per second. There is only one configuration that supports double data rate, that is DDR50. An SD card can switch between all the speeds, taking the default speed and the high speed at any time. UHS-2, which is a layered architecture, has four speed modes introduced with a speed up to 312 megabytes per second and half duplex model. UHS-3 was introduced with a full duplex model and have a speed of around 624 megabytes per second, like I, as I mentioned in full duplex model. Now the SD Express with PCI single lean gives a data throughput of around 985 megabytes per second. Let's throw some light on UHS-1. It was introduced in SD version 3.0. There are two types of UHS-1 cards. The first one, UHS-50 card, and second one, UHS-104 card. Both cards support default speed, high speed, SDR-12, SDR-24, and SDR-50. But th there is a special advantage to UHS-104 that can additionally support one uh, like one zero uh, two zero eight mega uh, hertz of frequency at SDR one zero four. SD card has four parallel data lanes to transfer the data from host to card or the vice versa. To send a byte of data, a single data rate mode will take two clock cycles, whereas your DDR mode will take single clock cycle to transfer uh, the entire bit. This portrays the basic SD card host and device model. This thing SD card clock, a command line and the data lines, the four parallel data lines. Host transmits a command on the command line and device if required, transmit the re response on the back on the command line. Data is shared on the data lines. All the lines are synchronous. Depending on the configuration, you can use a single lane or you can use all, all the four lanes. By default, these all the data lines and the command lines are pulled up by week one. They are pulled up by week one when the bus is in idle state. Any SD card features like password lock, command queuing, and data accessing extra, six, uh, like etc., can be performed by a specific command set sent by the host. As depicted here, like it's a multi-block operation. For a multi-block write operation, a multi-block write command is initiated by the host specifying edges to be written. After reception of valid and positive response from the SD card, like after that only the data transmission can happen. If the number of blocks are specified, then that many number of blocks are expected to come from the host. As the device receives, receives the data, the card will grow, uh, go it itself into the program state and will write the data into its, uh, the internal memory. Host can issue a stop command to hold the data transmission. Similarly, for a multi uh, like block read operation can also happen in the same fashion by sending the appropriate command. UHS-2 was introduced in SD spec version 4.0 it's a layered architecture comprising of four layers. First one, the mechanical layer, the physical layer, the link layer, and finally the transaction layer. The transaction layer is divided into two main layers. That is the SD TRAN layer. Second, the common CM TRAN layer. Like UHS-2 increases the bus speed up to 312 megabytes per second as compared to 208 megabytes per second from like, sorry, 104 megabytes per second from the UHS-1. UHS-2 has differential lanes for reference clock and data transfer. At least two lanes D0 and D1 are always active. An additional power supply is required to power up the UHS-2 interfaces, which is done by using the VDD-2 on the bus interface. It works in three topologies. First, point-to-point -point topology, which is a direct connection between the single host and a single device. Then the ring topology, which is a single host and multiple devices 
connected in a ring form and the hub technology or a topology which is a single host and multiple devices connected through hub it shows a basic uhs2 architecture for a transmission of packet from host to device uhs2 host cm tran or sd tran layer receives the packets from the driver to generate the transaction which is passed to the link layer and then to the file layer file layer then drives the encoded packet on a differential lane to a device side on the device side the file will sample the encoded packet and decode it and will transmit to the cm tran or the sd tran of the device to a link layer the cm tran or the sd tran layer of the device will communicate with the sd card for the function that received from the host it may be possible that sd uhs2 his host is connected to a sd uhs1 only supporting device which means is that the card does not support uhs2 in that case the host shall be smart enough to enable the device through a legacy initialization of the sd card keeping the uhs2 interface inactive the uhs1 portion of the host will now be active and it will work for uh, sending the transactions there are the tasks performed by each of the layer that is the physical layer and the link layer the role of the physical layer it's to for the transaction to and from the link layer and drive them to the sd bus interface file layer performs serialization and deserialization of the packet by using 8b 10b encoding clock generation and recovery at both the device and the host side is done by the physical layer itself symbol lock to start reception of data which is done using the comma symbols amplitude detector is also present in the file layer the number of data lanes and the direction of them is both done by the file layer but it is controlled by the link layer the link layer is responsible to maintain flow control and to maintain the data integrity creation of packet which will be transmitted to the file will be done by the link layer link layer also has special symbols sets which is used to control the process the sd tran will be using a native sd card protocol interface for performing the basic sd card command sets and the functions by converting them to the uhs2 commands and the packets basically it will act as a bridge to connect the legacy sd card commands to get compatible with the uhs2 environment if this is not performed then uhs2 can only be tested using a cm tran layer so finally the uhs3 was introduced in sd spec 6.0 command data and other packets or symbols are transmitted by d0 that is it's used for transmitting data from host to host to sd card and d1 for basically for transmitting from card to to host it uhs3 is also backward compatible with the uhs2 and does it support a full duplex model with capacity of around 312 like oh, sorry uh, with a data rate of around 312 megabytes per second this shows the different speed modes and ranges supported under the uhs2 and uhs3 so there are four ranges range a b c and d range a and b are supported by uhs2 and uhs3 in half duplex model for a transmission speed of around 312 megabytes per second but for range c and d this is only supported by uhs3 and the maximum transmission speed of 624 megabytes per second SD Express incorporates single PCI lane of 8 GB per second transfer, pro, uh, producing a data rate of around 985 megabytes per second. It performs 128 to 130 encoding. It has hot plug and and plug out support and has plastic casing. As uh, like its interoperability and is backward compatible to UHS-1 interface. It also supports the NVMe Express Revision 1.3, which is supported over the PCI interface. the nvme is provides the support that is is a light protocol for built in performance it supports the optional feature of pci and nvme that is the host memory buffer and the nvme will multiple queues and non locking mechanism this shows the speed that are supported by the sd express card 985 megabytes per second is a maximum speed that the sd express card can achieve through the pci interface 
but it as it is backward compatible so it supports all the speeds many features of sd cards such as password command queuing erase and speed class are supported in xd express card but not in the like express mode it's supported in the legacy mode if we combine the features of ssd speed low power implementation and command queuing plus the cache of sd card which is used in mobile phones gaming imaging etc it supports backward compatibility uh, like it can also be used with the existing host there are some of the applications uh, that sd express card is supporting for uh, like it's one can perform 8k video recording 360 degree recording super slow motion video emerging vr games and simulators multi channel iot devices in the artificial intelligence which is one of the booming industry to do increase in the number of cores speed of the processors and memory sd card need to be fast enough to avoid lag this industry will shortly get a boost on their growth and will overcome the uh, challenges faced there are two types of configuration that xd express supports that is initialization through a legacy interface uh by issuing the sd command and without issuing the sd commands and performing the initialization like the sake of the first one that is performing the normal legacy initialization of the card and supplying the voltage of the sd express environment this is highly recommended this diagram shows the xd express interface detection and in card internal states for initialization if host supports sd express card then it is highly recommended to check if the device also supports pci and then start the initialization after a card is detected, uh, detected and voltage one is supplied pseudo init state is active and exiting can only happen in two ways first uh, like if the sd clock or sd command is uh, is issued or the voltage two or voltage three is supplied when voltage two and three is supplied the pci gets ready for the pci link up at the pci link up state the pci mode gets enabled when the pci link up is succeeded exiting can done in the same manner either by turning off the voltages 2 or 3 or supplying the sd clock or the sd command so this was the pci enabling process for the sd express card this shows the communication between the cpu and the sd express card and host memory buffer the cpu communicates with the pci and nvme interface of the card to the pci root complex and sram was available in the ssd earlier which stores the information of the address of each file which can be accessed faster than the ssd but the sram is also slower to access compared to the host memory buffer which is present in the controller this buffer acts as a cache for the addresses of the files written by the cpu let's see some of the verification challenges which one can face while verifying the sd express like it says the testing of the features of the sd card in sd express mode for example setting write protect by the sd interface and trying to write by the sd express interface second switching between the interfaces while testing third testing of the shared memory from both the interfaces like for like erasing the memory from the sd bus and then writing or reading from the sd express interface all the features of nvme and sd have to be tested to achieve the uh, maximum functional coverage host need to be programmed so that both the sd express and sd uh, like legacy interface has to be tested thoroughly so uh, you have a question mark box uh, you can type in your questions and we would take up all the questions at the end of this webinar please do type in your questions we can take maximum questions as possible thanks as of now we see that only one lane is supported in the sd express card but going ahead like for the maximum performance and the speed two lanes will be used with gen 4 capability and nvme 1.4 is also in, uh, is planning to be incorporated in sd8 this is the true chip sd express vip overview on the left hand side we can see there is a test compliant suit which is connected with the sd express host bfm dut in the sd express host bfm dut there is a driver which is communicating with the sd host like driver sends a transaction to the sd express host host sd express host has the capability that it can work in both the models that is in the legacy interface as well and the pci interface as well so ye your on the right hand side there is a sd express card 
your SD Express card and host are communicated with the SD Express interface as defined by the specification. SD Express card have the is decoder which decides like the transaction transaction is coming from the legacy interface or is coming from the NVMe interface. For effective protocol testing, we have three monitors: one PCI monitor, second the NVMe monitor, and third the SD card monitor for a legacy interface. All these monitors have the capability of transaction logger that will helps you to avoid the debug, like help in reducing the debugging time. Second is the functional coverage. Plus assertions are also there, which can help you in effective testing. For the data integrity purpose, we have a scoreboard that collects the data from the driver, the, from the monitor, and finally from the memory. So effective testing or an effective data integrity can be maintained. Some of the features of Truchip VIP are, the VIP is fully compliant to SD7 and PCI Gen3. It supports both the features, or like both the features of SD card and the PCI mode. It specifically like supports application like host memory buffer by NVMe, NVMe with multi queues and no locking mechanism. It has protocol checkers that shout the error when there is an in case of violations. It supports full functional models and the bus functional models. There are many multiple scenarios where error injection can be performed. Either like it can be static or it can be dynamic. It supports advanced system level of features like constrained random testing. There is a built-in coverage analysis for your uh, like for your closures. There is a graphical analyzer to show the transaction for the easy debugging. The basically it shows the true eye that is the debug GUI. It's a patented version of the true chip. So the true eye is helpful for easy integration. With the help of true eye, you can easily integrate like your model into the true chip VIP or the true chip VIP into your model. It's for easy debugging. Uh, like how it helps in easy debugging is we have like decoded the patterns for you for like you don't have to refer to the waveform and you can directly see the decoded packets and uh, it can be easy for you for debugging. Easy searching, you can search the type of packets or type of information that encountered in the entire simulation. Easy error detection as like our GUI shows the uh, error with a detailed description and the number of errors that encountered in the simulation. So you can get from the information from there and will it, it will also show the probable cause of the error. So it also shows the easy configuration. You can configure your model from here itself. Okay, so like is the uh, uh, basically it shows the SD card transaction on the left hand side it sh shows the timestamps on the middle it shows the command index and the third is the response index. So you can see there is uh, the marker is on the command 24 and it shows this command index six there. Then we have issued the command zero that is like we have stopped the transaction. We have hold the transaction. Then we have again performing the initialization process that is command eight. And we are expecting the response of, uh, like response is received on the bus interface. So on the right hand side, there is the table that is a configuration table. Second is a command details. Third is the error info and the data attributes and data frame details. So all the configuration that you have configured for the your simulation will be shown in the configuration table. The command details, like if you have sent the uh, response seven or you have sent the command eight, what are the attributes of that command will get from here. Error info, it shows that like you can see the red color. So whenever there is a error, it will be shown in the red color with the actual value and expected value. So in like, if you can see there, it shows that there is a wrong CRC. The expected CRC was 24, but the actual CRC that we are receiving is 36. So you can easily get what is the probable cause. And the right corner, there is an error count that shows the number of error counts that occurred in the entire simulation. So it's NVMe GUI that is a control resistor that you're using. So here, the first it shows the direction that the, your, uh, the control registers are being configured from host to controller for, or from controller to host. Then the read and write direction is showing, like whether the registers are read only or the write only. Then the time at which the configuration updation was sent. The type of the registers, then the type of transaction, that is it shows the uh, like PCI associated with NVMe transactions. Then the register and command format, what is a format? the sub name and the data, like what is the argument of that and the payload. Similarly for the admin commands, you can get the entire picture of the admin, admin command. What is CID? What is your QPC? What is your PRP, etc. So all this information you can get very easily. You don't have to decode from the waveform. Uh, like 
so it shows uh, like its admin command is being continued. It's uh, showing the PCI transaction details, like what is the NVMe uh, transaction structure, what is the packet number, what is the type of the form, uh, like type of the packet, what is the format, what is your like uh, attribute. Everything you can get from the transaction logger itself or the GUI itself. You like decoding time is very saved. Okay, so similarly, everything, every information is provided like this itself. Okay. Okay. So thank you. That's from all our side. So uh, we have received many questions and uh, we will take up first question of the day. Which is from Vikas, Vikas Mishra. What is a hot hot plugin out? What is a hot plugin out from Vikas Mishra? Hi Vikas, good afternoon. So, like, it's one of the features of the PCI. It says that a device can be connected or disconnected when the system is active. You can directly connect or disconnect or connect it when uh, as per the requirement. So, here, like, hot plugin is one of the features of your PCI. Thank you. This another question is coming from James Chen and he asking what is meant by partial support of SD features by PCI interface. Jack Chen, I will repeat the question. What is meant by partial support of SD features by PCI interface? Okay, so SD features such as password lock, write protect, command queuing are not supported by the PCI interface. For let's take a scenario. What if a card is locked by the SD interface, the memory portion cannot be accessed by the from the PCI interface. Similarly, if the card is write protect by either temporary write protect or the permanent write protect by using the SD interface, the write function are not allowed by the PCI interface. So it's like it's very difficult to follow both the interfaces. Some some of the features are only supported by the legacy interface and some features are only supported by your PCI interface. So like locking mechanism, password protect, they are not supported, like not even partially supported by the SD Express through the PCI interface. They had to, have to be followed through the legacy interface itself. Okay, this is an anonymous question. Uh, the user has not written his name, but uh, I found the question uh, very uh, visionary, which is, can a large non-video file be stored in video class mode? I repeat, can a large non-video file be stored in video class mode? Yes, we, we can store that. It's uh, like, yes, the cap, this support is provided by the SD association. But one thing has to be kept in mind that the file has to be stored in the continuous location. So your data has to be stored in the continuous location like the video format. So you have to keep that. So your non-video file can also be stored in the video class format. Okay, this another question is from Mahesh Bhupati. Uh, why SD card over SSD? Why SD card over SSD? Yes, this is one of the important questions that we should discuss. So SSD is designed basically for the PCs only. But SD card provides faster access times when the data is stored or read from the sequential locations. Maximum number of read or write operation possible in the SD card is less than an SSD. SSD card dissipate less heat, which make it more suitable for the mobile devices. So you can't use SSD in your like mobile phones. They are meant for the PCs, but your uh, like SD cards are specific, uh, specifically for mobile phone itself. So that's a major difference that why we are moving from SD card over SSD. And in future, you can see that your booting or everything, your command from the processor can also be start from the SD card. So SSD is going to be obsolete. Thank you. Okay, so this was the last question of the day. And uh, uh, I'm sorry, I cannot take up more questions for the day. Uh, but be tuned for our next webinar. And uh, you can visit our website, trueship.net, for the previous webinars on JESD, Gen Z, and many other protocols for any any questions you can just email me uh, my email id was there in the in the invitation uh, and any which ways uh, you can email me at saurabh uh, s a u r a b h dot agarwal a g a r w a l at the rate true chip t r u e c h i p dot net you can email me and we will love to answer your questions
Thank you for the day, ladies and gentlemen. Have a great day. Bye bye.